Welcome on this first Sunday in August. It's August long weekend. It's beautiful weather. So blessings to those who are elsewhere today, um, enjoying and taking advantage of that. And for those of you who are here, so glad to have you. Welcome. It's good to be here as a community of faith together on the internet. Just a few announcements as we begin today. Uh, first of all, there is an um, opportunity to stay after service and talk. Some of you were just getting all your highs in before service. Please feel free to stay after service and, and we can just talk and catch up with people and say hi. So um, our virtual coffee time is something you can enjoy. Also, just want to, as we uh, continue uh, meeting in this uh, format, um, thank you. Um, we don't do offering like we used to do at church service. It's very different. So there are a number of ways to give. So thank you to all those who continue to support the church financially, um, be it uh, giving uh, online, dropping envelopes off at the church, uh, doing e-transfer, which is just uh, easy to do um, with the, we have the church um, email and you can do that. Uh, PAR is the pre-authorized remittance and there's some people who it just comes out every month or if that's something you would like to do, um, contact uh, the office and we'll help you get set up for that. Also, uh, you can donate on our church website. There's a donate button there as well. Some people are like, I would love to drop off an envelope but I'm not getting out and about. And if that's the case, um, we do have people ready to be volunteers to come pick up envelopes just to give a call to the office. But speaking of the office, um, just know if you call this week until Thursday, uh, Penny is off for vacation. So uh, you might not get a response right away, but we will be checking um, the phone, but there isn't going to be someone manning in the office as usual for the first part of this week. Also, um, we do have some times to meet during the week and being that it is a long weekend, our um, sharing care on Monday, will we will not be having there was some talk about people just doing long weekend things, but this week, Thursday, I mean, Tuesday to Friday at 11 a.m., you can join us, and we still will have our, our Bible study on Tuesday morning at 9.30 a.m. It's just a uh, hop in when you can. You're not, it's just one week at a time, so join us if you would like to just discuss our scripture and our psalms for the summer each week. Well, as we begin, let us acknowledge with gratitude the land that we are on. As we gather in this place, we remember with gratitude that we live and worship on lands that are by law, the unceded territory of the Wabanaki peoples, predominantly the land of the Mi'kmaq, Malamute, and Passamaquoddy. And we acknowledge the Mi'kmaq people and their stewardship of the land throughout the ages. Coal Harbor Woodside United Church is a safe place for all people to worship regardless of gender identity, race, creed, age, ability, cultural background, or sexual orientation. And as we worship, we recognize that Christ is in our midst. As I light our Christ candle and we celebrate where there are two or three, Christ is gathered in our midst, let us sing, we are one. gather this morning is a little bit different. Um, we're looking at a collection of psalms today, even though we're going to focus in on one. So it's taken from that uh, bigger collection. And so the words that are in our call to gather are directly from Psalm 134. Praise the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, who minister by night in the house of the Lord. 
Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and praise the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion, he who is the maker of heaven and earth. And let us join our voices in our opening prayer, inspired by the words of Psalm 126. Let us pray in one voice. Come to the sanctuary, this house, this home, our lives, holy Christ. And let us receive you with lavish welcome. You are the restorer of our fortunes, the promise of new life. We pour out our praise to you. Fill this room with your spirit and fill our hearts with your compassion. Not just in this time and place, but in all times and in all places. So that we may celebrate the great things that you have done for us. We may also embody the love you give to all. O oh God, bless us this day as we ascend into your presence and journey with one another. Amen. Well, let us come. Let us go into God's courts with worship and praise. Let us sing, Come, We That Love.
apologize for missing some words there. The chorus was left out and so that muffed up everything and, and I did okay and edit everything. So I didn't, I missed that. But maybe you recognize that, that chorus, we're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. And, and that ties in with the Psalms that we're looking at today because they were Psalms of people going, Zion's just another name for Jerusalem, the place where people worship. And um, we're looking at Psalms of Ascent today where when people would travel and go up to Jerusalem. So that, that Psalm would, is us singing about what some of these Psalms and this collection of Psalms is about, about going to Jerusalem or going to Zion. And that's exactly what, what Psalm 122 is about. It's a Psalm of David that celebrates Jerusalem and being able to go there. Let us hear God's word. I rejoiced with those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet are standing in your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built like a city that is closely compacted together. That is where the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, to praise the name of the Lord, according to the statutes given to Israel. There the thrones for judgment stand, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May those who love you be secure. May there be peace within your walls and security within your citadels. For the sake of my brothers and friends, I say, peace be with you. For the sake of the house of our God, I will seek your prosperity. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Well, we are all God's children. And so this time is a time for all of you. And I'm going to ask some questions. And if you've got an answer, you can either type it in and or you can unmute yourself and share. Now it's summer and we are missing some people because chances are they're doing what we often do in summer, traveling and road trip. Who <laughs> with a show of hands that did a road trip somewhere in the summer growing up? Sometimes it was only just to grandma's house. Sometimes it was across Canada to somewhere else or to see relatives in the States, but, and it could be a long drive. And when you're a kid, you know, one hour drive can feel long, let alone you know, 12 hour drive, eight hour, four, anywhere in between. And if you're a kid, perhaps you know on those drives that that question that you asked, are we there yet? <laughs> Poor parents had to find ways to entertain us. Now you see kids have, have video things they can watch or they can play games on their own electronics. But at one point that, that was not an option. So it was quite common to put in the time and to enjoy the trip that there was singing along the way. And maybe you didn't sing in the car with your family. I don't know if we were so much singers on our trips, but definitely when we had a school excursion and went somewhere, you had a bus full of kids and there would be singing. And I think we sang one, maybe these aren't the exact words, but it went something like 99 bottles of pop on the wall, 99 bottles of pop, take one down, pass it around. 98 bottles of pop on the wall, and it could go on and on and on. Does anybody else have a song that they sang while on the road? No one sang, it's like a long, long way to Tipperary. <laughs> oh, I'm seeing some nods. Or it'll tell you the age and stage and what was on reruns when I was growing up as a kid. Sometimes we'd be, we'd go into Flintstones, meet the Flintstones and sing the Flintstone theme song. Or another one I remember people starting into was just sit right back and you'll hear a tale, a tale of a fateful trip. And if you're a Gilligan's Island fan, you'll know that. I'm getting that uh, another song someone sang, You Are My Sunshine. Someone typed in and shared. Anything else that you sang coming or going? You would really hope that kids did not start into, this is a song that never ends. This just goes on and on, my friends. Some people started singing it a long, long time ago, and they'll just keep you singing it because this is the song that never ends, or one of those songs that sometimes I think parents were more happy to hear their kids complain than some of the songs they might have picked. 
But as we journey, even in movies, some of the best movies are the road seeds. And what happens? Sooner or later, there's a song on the radio and there's a, a song scene where people are just singing as they drive. Somehow singing and journeying go together. And we're going to see that in our, our Psalms today. And uh, the one that we shared at Psalm 122 sounds like it was a Psalm of arrival that they got there. And even when they got there, there were songs to sing to celebrate being there. But we're going to find out that maybe it actually was a song of anticipation on the way, already tasting what it was like to be there, even though they weren't. But we are people who sing. And if we can have a song for our journey, it helps. I know even in this COVID time, it is a hard time. But getting up and choosing to sing, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Or singing a song, Lord, I love you and praise you. Praise songs can be our songs, even when the journey is tough and hard. And they fill the journey. They, they make it not only pass by better, but it helps us to enjoy the ride. And as God's people, we are those who can sing songs of faith. And we definitely will relate with our psalms today. They're also called psalms of pilgrimage because we know as we travel, to be singing is good for our heart and good for our soul. So let us give thanks and praise to God. Let us pray. Loving God, thank you that we can worship you and adore you. And thank you that we can be singing people. Help us to sing when the road is rough. Help us to sing when there are things to celebrate. Help us to sing our faith when we need to be reminded to trust you. Bless those who are traveling this day and who are far and wide enjoying this long weekend. And be we at home, be we on the road somewhere. May we know your safety, your protection, your goodness and grace. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we're going to sing, and we're going to sing a familiar tune, but it's the words from the psalm I just read from Psalm 122, to the tune of Amazing Grace. Now there's a song you can sing places on the road and everybody seems to know, but you'll need to pay attention to the words today um, so we can sing Psalm 122.
There, it's better when I unmute myself to talk. <laughs> I can't help but wonder what tune originally Psalm 122 would have came with. And I would think, you know, like Amazing Grace is a very easy tune for us to sing. It would have to be something singable, I would think, if people are all going to sing it together. We know the ones that groups like to sing tend to be, you know, easy and you sort of know where the song is going. But, but we don't know what it was like or what tune. And they wouldn't do something that we tend to like to do in North America. We like to have rhymes to our, to our each line, don't we? And, and that wouldn't have been the case. Well, we're going to dive in and, and take a look. But let us begin with a word of prayer. Let us bow. Loving God, we thank you for this opportunity to have um, summer with the Psalms. We thank you that in these Psalms, we find the story of your people. We also find our story. So open our, our minds and hearts to hear the encouragement, the, the challenge that we need to hear this day. May we be spurred on and may you minister, minister to each one of us by your Holy Spirit. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, as I mentioned, we were looking at Psalms of Ascent, or if you saw your bulletin earlier this week when it came out, you would have seen that. And the psalm, it's not just a Psalm of Ascent, there are a set of these psalms that are called Psalms of Ascent. There's 15 altogether, and they start and run in one spot. They start at Psalm 120 and go to 134. Now, they also have some other names. You may have made me hear, heard me refer to it already as pilgrim songs or songs of pilgrimage. So songs of ascent, pilgrimage, or gradual songs. They also are sometimes called songs of decree, or degrees, sorry, because they're, you're sort of moving up and along with them. And that also ties into the next name they get. They get songs of steps because these were sung by God's people as they literally went up to worship in Jerusalem. And so there, there is, when you read all of them together, there's sort of this upward motion in this set of 15 Psalms from 120 to 134. When they begin in 120, you know, the psalmist is, is we read that Psalm, he's crying out in trouble because he's far away from Jerusalem. And then the very end, they end in Psalm 134 with the psalmist offering up praise in the temple courts to God. Now, while overall there's this upward movement in the Psalms, there's also sort of a repeated, sounds more like a downward progression at times within the Psalms and within the groupings. And it's been found that if you break these 15 Psalms into five groups of three, so every three Psalms, you'll notice a pattern. And in these little trios that are throughout five times throughout to this bigger set, you'll see that, that uh, each time that the first psalm in this little trio or triad is about some kind of trouble. The second psalm that follows it focuses on trusting God. And then the third psalm focuses on, on victory and praise of some sort. And for example, if we were to look at psalm, the first three in this, in this set, in this first triad, Psalm 120 begins, as I mentioned before, the psalmist is sad. He's far away in trouble in a faraway land. And next in Psalm 121, which if uh, we're using that as our benediction today, when you get there, we'll be like, hey, I know that one. Psalm 121 reminds us to, you know, look up that it's God that we trust in. And then today we read Psalm 122. And here the psalmist gathers with God's people for worship in Jerusalem. And as one commentator sees this repeated pattern, he calls it like there's a trouble, trust, and then triumph. And we see this repeated five times through. So overall, there is upward movement in these pilgrim psalms. And yet, they also reflect reality. Because all of us know, even though overall we're traveling onward and upward, real life kicks in and it's not always an easy go, is it? We feel like we take two steps forwards and one step back. And, and so maybe that's why there's these psalms of trouble keep coming up because again and again, life seems to cycle through trouble. Yes, we're moving on with God and we're moving in our spiritual journeys, but it seems 
life can be rough along the way. And we have to then remember to trust again. And then there's a triumph in knowing that, that God is faithful. He got us through that trouble. And then when the next one comes up again, we almost have to do this cycle again and again. So it seems, you know, even without reading all the Psalms of Ascent, we can find that they are already encouraging to our own lives. We're not the first people to journey through life with God. And these Psalms of pilgrimage remind us that, you know, as we go, don't be surprised by trouble. Keep on trusting. Keep on trusting, even when it seems like your steps are taking you backwards at times. Because overall, we are moving forward with a kind and gracious God who goes with us and keeps propelling us onward. Of the Psalms, of the 15 Psalms in these Psalms of Decree, there, there are only four of them that are actually attributed to David. One is thought to be penned by Solomon, his son and successor, and the other 10 are anonymous. We don't know who wrote them. And the one we're reflecting on today, Psalm 122, is, is the first of the songs of ascent that were written by David. And that's sort of nice, because so far the psalms we have looked at in our Psalm Summer series have all been by David. Now, Psalm 122 would have been sung as a psalm by, by pilgrims on their way to go to Jerusalem when they went there to celebrate their great feasts, such as Passover. But it seems odd. We, these psalms of ascent, these psalms of pilgrimage, just began at Psalm 120. And here we are in Psalm 122, and it, it sounds like we're celebrating already arriving in Jerusalem. Well, Jerusalem's very important because in the days of pilgrimage, that's where God's temple was. And the temple was important because the temple represented the place where people got to meet with God. And so while Jerusalem is loved and upheld in this psalm, it's not just for political motivation. The reality is many people who might sing this psalm at one time or other would be captive somewhere else, such as the time, you know, God's people were in Babylon as captives. They weren't going physically to Jerusalem. And the temple in Jerusalem would have been in shambles. So the celebration of Jerusalem is really more about that it represents where God is and wanting to be where God is. And it's also a reminder that, that corporately, that, that worship was a corporate thing, that somewhere where they went together to worship. Now, in this time of COVID, you know, it can sort of be hard to read that very first verse of Psalm 122. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Because we're probably thinking, that's the one thing we'd like to do, but we're not able to do right now. And won't we all be glad on the other side of this pandemic, on the other side of all this precaution, when we can look at each other and go like, let's go, we're going to meet and actually worship in the church building together. Let's gather in person at Coal Harbor, Woodside United and worship God together all at the same place at the same time. And it's a really happy thought. Maybe it always was, but, but all the more now since we aren't able to do it. And yet, isn't it great that we have Zoom? <laughs> we can see faces here. We can be together. We can worship God, and we can connect with one another this way. The truth is, you know, church is not a place. Church is not a building. Church is people. It's all of you. It's us together. It reminds me of that song in our hymn book. The church is wherever God's people are praising, singing God's goodness for joy on this day. The church is wherever disciples of Jesus remember his story and walk in his way. So we're a church today because we're doing all those things. And I'm thankful that nothing, nothing can stop us from being church and from worshiping God wherever we are. I find it's ironic that David wrote this psalm. Well, he was sort of king of Jerusalem, so you would think he's already there. And the reality is David never went to the temple to worship God because the temple wasn't built till after he, he died. He may have wanted to, but it was his son. 
who followed him, King Solomon, who actually did that. Yet there's a lot we can learn about worship in this psalm. First, it starts off with that anticipation. There is joy in coming to worship. I've heard from many people that you look forward to Sunday, that you look forward to this time together, it sort of plants your week. And I look forward to meeting with you all. And I know the reality is, you know, we're meeting with God together and the reality is on our own, we could all not even be on Zoom, we can meet with God on our own. But as I said, when I lit the Christ candle this morning, there's something special when two or three gather in Christ's name to worship. Corporate worship is a gift. Is there anticipation for you around worship? Can you truly say, I was glad when they said to me, let us come together for worship. David highlights that worship should have a, a sense of, of joy, a joy to come together and to be in God's presence. Then the midsection of the psalm re reminds us that worship consists of praising God, but also learning God's statutes, some places say, which means God's words and God's ways. <coughs> Sorry. You know, worshiping God doesn't just allow us to feel close to God. It enables us to have an opportunity to get to know God better. We, we learn and understand God's judgments and God's ways. We're able to appreciate and more fully. Oops, <laughs> my computer is sensitive and the mute went on there. Sorry, folks. <clears throat> we are lifelong learners. We are learning new things in worship. And I'm always learning in worship, even on the days where it might not seem like I'm learning a brand new thought I didn't know before. I'm learning in the sense that I'm being reminded of things that I do know, but may have forgotten in the rush and the chaos of life. Coming to worship, I am learning and remembering again and again that God is a God of love and mercy and that God's ways are the way of grace. The Psalm in 122 ends with a response to corporate worship. In verse six, I'm gonna read that verse that says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem as a command that we are supposed to pray for that city. And some take it to mean specifically we're supposed to pray for the Jewish people there. As those of you who have traveled to Jerusalem can testify, <laughs> there is much need to pray for the city of Jerusalem. The city is guarded with checkpoints and armed guards. But that's not the context I think we're called to read the psalm in. We read the psalm in the context of worship, we see that, read it beyond a literal cry to cry and pray for peace in a certain place. If Jerusalem represents the place that one meets with God, then we can frame this final section of the Psalm as a desire that others too, if there's peace here, others too will be able to come here and worship God. And so this desire is that others would continue to worship God and to ignore, experience his peace and know that there is blessing in meeting with God and worshiping the Lord. The Psalm ultimately ends with a blessing on, upon others because worship isn't just this personal encounter with God or even corporate encounter with God. Worship isn't just this holy huddle. Worship is reaching out and going beyond it prompts us to seek the peace and the well-being of others. We don't just come here to feel good for us. We come here to get filled up, to go and share good news, to be good news, to be people who live peace and pursue it. So that we can go out and love and care, or as our church likes to say, bring the care and comfort of Christ. And so the, for the sake of the house of our God, 
we will seek the prosperity of others. Once again, it makes me think of that, that hymn I referenced just a minute ago. The second verse is, the church is wherever God's people are helping, caring for neighbors in sickness and need. The church is wherever God's people are sharing the words of the Bible in word and in deed. So what an encouragement to reflect on Psalm 122 today, a psalm that will help us as together we seek to pilgrimage and descend closer to God. May it spur us on in our spiritual journeys to find joy in our worship, joy in our connection and togetherness with God and with one another. May it inspire us to keep praising as we go and to continue to learn and sometimes relearn or unlearn things that, such as ways of hate and discouragement and relearn grace and goodness. And finally, may this psalm embolden us as a church to always be seeking peace and pursue it, to bless one another with it, and to bless the world with peace as those who have been in the presence of God. Amen. Cindy will share with us our, our moment for mission this day. Growing a green legacy. Our gifts for mission and service fully support the Embracing the Spirit grant program for communities of faith and innovative ideas. Westmount Park United Church of Montreal, Quebec has been able to grow its initial grant into a faith in nature vision of the church. A belief that nature connects us all, as well as monthly climate cafes and a cooperative garden on its front lawn Westmount Park advocates for the environment and its local community. Ginkgo bilobo trees have been, a, have been symbols of hope for Hiroshima survivors because the trees grew leaves again after the atomic bombing of 1945. 
in partnership with Green Legacy Hiroshima, a Japanese organization that shares seeds across the world for a nuclear-free planet. Westmount Park was one of three faith organizations that received ginkgo seeds that are growing into strong trees. The physical existence and history of those seeds tell a powerful story, and their very presence provides a living link between the people of Hiroshima and Montreal and Westmount Park United Church. If mission and service giving is already a regular part of your life, thank you so much. If you have not given, please join me in making mission and service a regular part of your life of faith. Loving our neighbor is at the heart of our mission and service. Well, thank you, Cindy. And I'd also like to thank Charles for our music today, Audrey, who's been leading us in the words, um, and Tamara Mugford, who's been uh, doing our PowerPoint and providing voice on when they had a responsive reading. After thanking all of you for all your parts, let us come and let us thank God, let us pray. Well, thank you, God, that this is the day that you have made, that we can rejoice and be glad in it, because it is a gift from you, is a gift of every breath, because it is a day where we can gather together to worship and to be part of your body. We thank you, God, today for, for sunshine and for joy, for the journey. We thank you that we aren't alone, that we live in God's world, that we have one another, and that we have you as our constant companion, Lord Jesus. We thank you that even in the midst of, of this COVID time, God, you were with us and you were faithful. We thank you for this summer season where things are a little different, where people can relax and rest in a way that's needed in a world that needs Sabbath so much. We give thanks this day for phones that keep us connected, for computers that, that let us see one another, but also hear messages of hope to spur us on as we live for you. We thank you, God, for your, your word. We're diving into a, a psalm that a section of the Psalms that maybe we hadn't before, for a section of the Psalms that spur us on to keep on keeping on with you. We thank you too for the message of peace found there. And so we pray for peace for our whole world, oh God, for the peace that only you can give, not only for the absence of conflict and battle, but also for the fullness of life that is prosperity for all, goodwill among neighbors, and welcome for every outsider. Lord, hear us, as in our hearts and in our voice, we name situations and nations that, that need your shalom. We pray for our own country, Canada. We pray for families buffeted by storm of economic despair. We pray for families that are dealing with prejudice and bigotry. We pray for families that have a history of dysfunction and are struggling to, to find health and new patterns. We also pray in bigger ways for our world, for war-torn countries. But we also pray for our family and friends and those that we silently name before you now who need your peace in a powerful way. God, we do pray for the peace of Jerusalem, but not just Jerusalem. We pray for peace in every city, in every home, in every heart. And this we ask in Jesus' name. Jesus, the one who taught us to pray this prayer that we now pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. 
for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> well, we have sang or talked much about pilgrims, and we are pilgrims on a journey, and we travel with one another. So let us sing that beautiful hymn from our own voices united. this speaks of such a beautiful way to, to travel on the road. Sometimes, we, you know, we're ahead and we need to help those who are behind. And sometimes we're the one that needs, you know, to be gracious enough to be willing to take a hand, be kept spurred on to keep going. Because some days the roads feel steeper and tougher than others, but we're not alone. Aren't we blessed to have one another and to have our constant companion Christ? Well, for our benediction, we're using Psalm 121, which would have been right before the psalm we looked at today. And you may recognize it. It is a psalm of trust. And may it spur us on to know where to look, to who to trust as we go forth this week. Uh, join in the bold as I begin. I lift my eyes up to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. God will not let your foot slip. The one who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, God who watches over us will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm us by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. The Lord will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over our coming and our going, both now and forevermore. And so as you journey, may you go knowing the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the peace and the power of the Holy Spirit. And remember, we worship together to inspire us to go out. So as our hymn of closing, let us sing, Go to the World.